Welcome to the Nutri Medical Report, and we have an amazing guest for you. Probably one of the most important geopolitical guests and documentary filmmakers of our era, Joel Gilbert. And Joel actually did the what I call the tightest uh, declaration of fact, not fiction, about Obama and his real origins and his real intents with um, his remarkable documentary, Dreams of My Real Father, not the book written by Mr. Bill Ayers and proxy for Obama. This documentary is so tight, there's less air and space than between the bricks of the Pyramid of Giza. I mean, there's no really opinion that is even available, because as soon as you just watch it, your, your head is hanging forward, your jaws drop to the floor, and you go, oh my gosh, have we ever been had? Um, Joel, tell us about the, the background of this documentary, because your talents at actually showing this so tightly, if enough people in the swing states and undecided voters see this documentary, this will change the direction of the election. And as much as, as Romney, uh, with his summa cum laude and his magic underwear, won the debate, and obviously probably could manage America as a business, uh, Obama is the worst possible outcome for America. And if we do get a second term, as I said before, it will resemble the first term of Vladimir Lenin. Uh, he is a dyed in the wool, as you say, and I love your term you use on the documentary. He's a red diaper baby communist. Uh, there's nothing could be, be more accurate in terms of his portrayal. Tell us the genesis of this documentary and how important it is for America and the world at this time. Well, this film is uh, critical to get the information about this film out because it has the real story of who Barack Obama is and what his political foundations are. Uh, he sold himself to America four years ago as this multicultural ideal. He was a man who stood above politics because his father was a goat herder from Kenya. Uh, so he would bring people together. That was the story. In reality, through my research, as I demonstrate in the film, Barack Obama's real father was Frank Marshall Davis, a Communist Party USA propagandist and Soviet agent, who Obama admits raised him from age 9 to 18, and indoctrinated Obama in a classic Marxist worldview and Marxist political foundation such that Obama arrived at Occidental College at 18, admittedly, as a committed revolutionary Marxist to study with Marxist professors. And my film demonstrates that his entire life he's been following these deadly Marxist dreams from his real biological father who became his ideological father. So Obama intentionally hid a deeply disturbing family background to hide this Marxist political foundation. It's an incredible manipulation of the electorate to have these, uh, an agenda that's irreconcilable with American values. The Kenyan Obama was simply a sham marriage at the time. There was no grand plan, but Obama's mother had an affair with this 55-year-old communist pornographer who was known for seducing underage girls, and uh, they covered it up with this Kenyan student, and uh, all the evidence is in. Uh, the Kenyan is not the father. His father was Davis, and Obama was raised by him and indoctrinated by him. It's a very common phenomenon in the radical left where uh, all the leadership of the Marxist terrorist groups, whether underground, SDS, they were all children of Communist Party members. Obama in the White House today is the same. He's a red diaper baby. Also, David Axelrod, his uh, chief advisor, his mother was a communist journalist in, in New York, also a red diaper baby. Valerie Jarrett, her father-in-law, was Vernon Jarrett, worked with Obama's father on a Chicago communist newspaper called the Chicago Star, Red Diaper Baby. That's who's running the country, and people deserve to know the truth. That's why we're, we made the film. That's why it's number one in Amazon documentaries, and we're even shipping as a publicity campaign. We've shipped a million point two to Ohio. We just dropped a million and a half in Florida, 700,000 to Colorado, 500,000 Iowa, <clears throat> we've done New Hampshire, Nevada. We're going to keep going state by state, million by million, until the mainstream media wants to tell the truth about Obama's past. Uh, they're afraid to do it, and I'm not afraid, because the truth uh, has to come out. Yeah, in fact, uh, America will not withstand a second term. A second term of Obama means the following, and I want you to expand on it. The closure of basically uh, almost every coal-generating uh, uh, power plant in America, the, the complete decease of virtually all licenses of gas and oil in any new refineries in America, the move toward more so-called green energy, which I believe in solar and other things, but these are kind of like, uh, at, the, at the moment, the technology is not there, and it certainly will not substitute for the need for gas and oil, even if we had what we call 
tokamak fusion reactors and all kinds of other things, you're still going to need glass and oil uh, for petrochemicals, for all kinds of things, that even if you're not using it for energy, and that'll be decades away. Uh, the fact is Obama will destroy America, and dependence on countries like the Middle East, America should have already moved to be completely independent. As a result of Obama, <clears throat> he wants to actually move us to become more dependent, and he delayed the pipeline coming from Canada. He delayed the licensures to, to allow more gas and oil exploration in the Gulf of Mexico, which are safe and not near the Macondo site. But yet he allows the Chinese to do uh, drilling 60 miles off the Florida coast. So Obama is the worst of all possible outcomes. Then, And his friend, Mr. Soros, benefited from the closure of the oil fields after Macondo, where they shouldn't have allowed that licensure to occur in that specific site. But yet his friend Soros benefited from a U.S. contracts and billions of dollars that then left, let him shift his oil rigs down to Brazil to uh, do oil exploration uh, in the same kind of waters off of the Brazilian coast. Uh, Obama is a nightmare for America. And if he gets a second term, states and cities will go bankrupt. The country will, in a sense, fall apart because one more term will destroy the United States and it will come under central control, communist regime that will control the Internet and any free speech will be gone. It will control the medical system. It will make it eugenic medicine. Can, I, can I get in a word yeah. here, sir? Yeah, I, yes. I want you to yeah, I'd want to lay the groundwork because I think I, uh, well, you did an amazing I'll, job. <clears throat> I'm happy to do an interview, but uh, let me tell you something about the film and, and give you yeah. some of my perspective if, if I can get a chance. Absolutely. All right. Uh, what's important uh, that the film shows is that um, Obama's election was not a sudden political phenomenon. It's the uh -huh. lack of a media that's willing to tell the truth and look into things. I've been to Hawaii twice. That's twice as much as all the mainstream media combined. Uh, right. And what I found is something that anybody could find if they would know where to look or be willing to look. But there's been an infiltration in uh, all over the U.S. economy, universities, and media for decades. And these socialists and Marxists have been successful, successful in their effort to turn the Democratic Party to the far left. That was their strategy that they employed. Obama went to these socialist scholars conferences in the 80s, and they taught them to use words like problem solving and fair play as code words to polarize the country and force the Democratic Party to embrace socialism as their natural ideology. The new code word in this election is middle class families. That's it. Obama, middle class families. I want to help middle class, middle class families, again and again, middle class. The reality is that Obama and these Marxists hate the middle class. They view them with contempt. In Obama's own words, they cling to their guns and religion. They look down on them. And the socialist strategy is to use the middle class, just like their strategy was to use minorities and black people to collapse capitalism by forcing the banks to lend to minorities, even though they're not qualified borrowers. That was a plan that Obama employed in Chicago by representing Acorn to Sioux City Bank. And this was taken to the White House by Acorn and through Henry Cisneros. They convinced Bill Clinton to lower the lending standards across the board in the late 90s. So it was Obama himself who created the model for the subprime mortgage crisis that crashed the economy, and it was all by design. The next victim is the middle class. Mm -hmm. They see as the the uh, what upholds the capitalist system. So the plans for the next term are to give away middle classes health care to poor and illegals. Uh, they they're going to tax and regulate middle class employers out of business, and we'll get to the point by the end of the term where any middle class retirement savings will evaporate into a bankrupt socialist state. So we'll have one big lower class with no middle class. It's going to disappear. And then you'll have a group of political elites who control the wealth. This is the Marxist system. It's a failed ideology that failed again and again, and it resulted in economic ruin of all these economies. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely precise explanation of why this film is so important. Dreams of My Real Father, Father by Joel Gilbert. You need to order it on Amazon now. Back in a moment.
Welcome back, and Joel Gilbert is our documentary film guest. The documentary film you must get, if you're listening to this program, don't listen any longer even if you don't get this film. This is so important. This is going to change the course of American history. If the swing state undecided voters get this film, they're going to know the truth about Obama and what his real nature is, what his real background is. Joel, please continue. Tell us more about the film. Okay, well, uh, it's been number one on Amazon now for uh, almost a month, number one documentary. Anybody can see the uh, trailer buy the DVD also on our film website. It's obamasrealfather.com. Always got breaking news. Even though I found out so much information and put it in the film, there's always developments coming up, so I do post those on the website. And uh, once you watch the film, you'll understand that, as I said, America has been had. Uh, There is a, a communist Marxist background to this president, and he intentionally hid it by misdirecting everybody to the Kenyan goat herder, taking trips to Kenya, talking about the Kenyan father. It's all misdirection because if people knew the truth, uh, they wouldn't vote for him. I'm asking and demanding, I think everyone should demand that Obama come clean about all these things about his past. He said just the other day on the campaign trail, if you want to be president of the United States, you've got to tell the truth. Well, Obama needs to say, I can write it for him, My father was a Communist Party propagandist and Soviet agent who indoctrinated me into Marxism. Please vote for me. I wish to bring this ideology to destroy the American middle class Mm -hmm. to the White House. Now, let's have people vote on the merits rather than a fairy tale. That's what I'm looking for. (laughs) You know how to get down to the the, the meat and and, uh, potatoes of this issue. What's amazing to me, shocking to me, is the even more than the the cover-up and the complete scam of Obama, the abomination in a sense, is the lack of attention by the media. They're culpable with this, as you say, this is not a one-day wonder. This happened over a period of years where the media kind of coddled and coddled and pushed forward this image of Obama as this, in a sense, this geopolitical cultural genius that's going to bring everybody together, and he did the exact opposite. He never did any bipartisan work. He is literally a class warfare uh, race warfare divider, which is one of the dialectics that the communists use. Uh, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Uh, well, it's uh, it's something that started a long time ago. Uh, the <clears throat> Communist Party USA started in Chicago in the late 1920s. Uh, they were recruiting journalists to help spread Soviet propaganda and American public opinion. And one of their recruits was Obama's father, Frank Marshall Davis, was a reporter, journalist in Chicago. And he joined the Communist Party and wrote for the Chicago Star and uh, became really a leader of the Communist Party. He taught at the uh, Abraham Lincoln School, where uh, he taught Marxism, he taught jazz music, uh, and he helped write the curriculum. So his father was a uh, Communist Party leader. In 1948, the Kremlin was interested in getting rid of U.S. naval forces in Hawaii, which they considered to be an obstacle to Soviet expansion in Asia. So they uh, sent, on orders from the Kremlin, Frank Marshall Davis went to Hawaii to help foment a communist takeover through the labor union. They held a six-month strike that eventually failed. And uh, uh, Obama's father became a writer for the Honolulu Record, a communist newspaper. And he flawlessly mirrored the official Soviet propaganda. He uh, bashed Wall Street, called for socialized medicine, called President Truman a warmonger. And when you look at Obama's philosophy and policies in office, they flawlessly mirror Frank Marshall Davis. Uh, And anyone that watches the film will come to that conclusion. And people are upset on two levels. Number one, Obama lied about his uh, father, who he was, and that he has an agenda that he did not reveal. So both of these things are very upsetting to Americans who deserve the right to vote for someone. They know who he is and they know what he stands for. And that didn't happen in the last election, and it's going on today. Yeah, what's amazing is we need, we need transparency. It's amazing how much money has been spent on attack ads, but very little on truth. And when truth comes forward, like in your documentary, it should be everywhere. I mean, the, the, all the major media should be discussing this. And, of course, the idea is if there really is truth and fairness, fair, fairness in broadcasting, if you propose all these things, which you show with documentary film clips and actual documents that you highlight, you're not posing an opinion. You've just done very excellent journalistic research. They should have an answer. They shouldn't just there 
kind of sideline you and say, no, this is too hot to handle. We can't really put this on our network. This should be something that is front and center because why would people even trust the media? You know, it's one of the problems with the media is they're literally committing, in a sense, media Harry Carey. They're killing themselves. How could people trust the media when they just lie and they twist things? Uh, I mean, they try to make Obama to be this wonderful savior for the middle class, and he's there. If you want to call it, he's the 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 bony finger of the of the Grim Reaper for the middle class. Well, I was at the National Press Club July 19, and I gave a big talk. There were a lot of media there in the audience, and I accused them of intentionally suppressing the news. There's something called the journalist creed that I read to them. That's kind of like the Hippocratic oath for journalists. It requires them to be unbiased, to be public trustees, and always tell the truth and never suppress the news. And I accuse all of them of violating the journalist creed. I said that if the, uh, all the doctors decided to ignore the Hippocratic Oath, we'd all get sick. And in this uh. case, the journalists have decided to ignore the journalist creed, and we're all getting sick of Marxism, sick with Marxism, infected with Marxism. Yeah. And once yeah. uh, I think the, the media has to be cleaned out of these guys that are really just uh, the television News networks are simply reality shows based on current events. They're not news organizations. Yeah, exactly. People think that they are, but they're not. They're not. Yeah, they're a reality TV. A good example was the dialogue that went on between Obama trying to accuse Romney as being the template for Obamacare. And what Romney says, look, that's the Tenth Amendment. The states have a right, depending on where their state is and how they want to run their program. It's not top-down control. It's not the 15-member utilization review panel. It's not all the other things that pull money out of Medicare and supposedly are going to provide care to everybody else. It's not the death panels, which really do exist. You know, Sarah Palin didn't think this up in her own mind. Uh, and it's not just the idea of trying to reduce the price of drugs and medical equipment or plastic tubes and make more competition for medical suppliers. What Obamacare will do is temporarily pump up the insurance companies, the drug manufacturers, and the insurance and the big medical networks, and eventually destroy it so you have a single-payer system, which is like the Soviet Union. It's just going to be horrendous. It'll be turning the medical system into the Department of Motor Vehicles. Right. Well, uh, it's been a plan in the works for many years, and Obama and his gang are trying to implement this Chicago-style one-party state by putting everybody dependent on federal government, thinking this will create a permanent democratic presence in the White House. By doubling people on food stamps, even the health care law that was not about health care, that was about making enough people dependent on government for health care that they would more likely vote for the Democrats. It's a power play, nothing else. These people don't uh, care about uh, health as much as they care about uh, maintaining power. Exactly. A good example was the first two years when he had a mandate, he never had a fast track for legal immigration, and then he passes this executive order uh, to, to try to see if he can uh, somehow get the Hispanic vote when he didn't deal with it properly. Amazing. Back in a moment with Joel Gilbert, this amazing film you need to get today, Dreams of My Real Father. It's on Amazon. Get it today.